This week's shakedown is the best damn show ever because it's the day after Mustang show, D-A-M, get it? Ford launched this new Mustang yesterday, but we're recording this show the day before. Now, thanks to internet leaks and my willingness to hang myself out with comments and opinions before the official facts, today we get a chance to discuss this car with you, ask you questions, and get your best damn first reaction to the basic premise, did Ford break good or break bad with this new 50-year anniversary Mustang? And since this is Shakedown, we'll also talk Mustang Motorsport, and I'll give my reasons why this new car that is now a Mustang position for global sales, is tasked with enhancing the image of Mustang and Ford, is walking the line between better performance and EcoBoost efficiency, and is gonna be touted as a more refined, more polished automotive athlete, that independent rear suspension thing, why this Mustang needs to race in global GT class competition. Hey, it's Mustang, the other iconic American car. What's not to discuss? Come back, let's do that. The new Ford Mustang, let's discuss. But let's not do it the typical auto internet bullshit way of some host guy spewing his survey of one personal opinion about design and stories about how I used to own a Mustang and all that barf stuff. And then you guys lament in the comment section about like the shoulders of the car look too much like a Camaro and Mustang should always be a V8 and what the fuck is going on with this pussy four cylinders, blah, 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 freaking blah. Let's not do any of that. Instead, I'm deputizing all of you as junior automotive brand managers and asking you to think about this Mustang in that context. You are now responsible for the business of making and selling cars, managing the brand, attracting customers, and as you'll see, all in the context of automotive passion. Now you know because this is Mustang and it's a passionate car. And auto execs know a big part of the car buying decision is driven by the emotions one has for the car, even with a damn Camry. Good auto execs know that they are not selling toasters for a living, they're selling more. And why am I taking a shot at this type of discussion? Well, I did time at both Ford and Toyota as a corporate auto exec in sales, marketing, advertising, branding, and on various launch teams, including, believe it or not, Mercure. Yeah, I hate it. Okay, after all that that I've done, I still do some consulting with the auto brands, and I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I did pay enough attention, so here we go. So okay, brand managers, let's start with that context thing. There are four basic questions for any product, any car, for Mustang, and for any brand manager. Number one, what do you want to be? In effect, what is Mustang supposed to do for its owners and for Ford? Number two, what do you want to say? What are the Mustang brand claims that you want to make? Number three, who do you want to say it to? I know it's bad English, but who's the buyer? And remember, it ain't everybody. And number four, how is the best way to say it? So with numbers one, two, and three answered, how and where to communicate? TV, social media, drive advertising. A little more context. There's the metrics and the emotions. And first, let's start with the emotions. With complete respect to some of the great Ford of your products and Falcon in Australia, Ford as an American car company has two iconic vehicles that make Ford what it is on their balance sheet and in the minds of the public. Number one, are the Ford trucks. And number two, it's Mustang. 50 years of Mustang tradition. A game changer from day one with that first Mustang in 1964 and a half. Mustang is the poster child for Ford Motor Company. The Ford that respects an owner's passion for their car. Model T, Ford Mustang. Same game changers, same respect for car ownership in my opinion. But Mustang is not as important as Model T was because of the metrics, the sales numbers. Mustang is a smaller percent of Ford total sales, and the sporty car category is smallish too. Here we go. Today, US auto industry annual sales are around what? 15 million plus or minus year to year. Sporty car sales are what? Only 600,000 annual, so that's only 4% of the business. The best of the category are Mustang and Camaro, and back and forth they lead, 80,000-ish every year to get that leadership position. The links below have some monthly and year-to-date sales numbers, so you can see who sells what, how much, and how little. Now, a typical 2013 U.S. sales month goes like this. Camaro, maybe 7,000. Mustang, 6,000. The new Vet, 4,000. Challenger, 3,000. Hyundai Veloster, 2,000. FRS, 
and VW GTI, about 1,000 each. Everyone else is under 1,000 per month, that small, like Porsche 911 and BRZ, they're only at about 750. Jaguar F-Type, 350 plus or minus. The sporty car category sales total is about 50,000 each month. Again, four, maybe 5% of the industry. So a car like Mustang is not a volume play. Although I hope Ford is making money on each one of those things, betcha they are, but no. Mustang is image, emotion, and brand equity for Ford. But Mustang is saddled with heritage as well, 50 years of it, and I say saddled because when this new car gets designed, the corporate question becomes, do I abandon history and those buyers and move forward completely or a little bit? Or do I take the risk and push forward, but maybe have to win over a whole new set of audience? And will the old buyers be ready to come with me, or are they clinging to their Parnelli Jones Trans Am memories? You get my drift. Which is, which is part of the challenge, and challenge is the polite corporate word for problem, with a car like Mustang. Do I cling to the old girlfriend, stay the pony car course, and we'll all be going to Applebee's for the $10 entrees, or do I do a massive makeover, date the hot hipster chick, and start hanging out at the Euro Bistros and Vapor Cafes? In the auto world, that translates to live axle versus IRS, V8 versus turbos, new style versus old school Mustang design cliches. So question number one, hey Mustang, what do you want to be? Now, I assume when I go to the official PR launch, I'll hear, quote, new Mustang is a progressive evolution of the American pony car spirit, updated with refinement, efficiency, and world-class performance at an affordable price. And they'll probably say something like, a car that inspires great driving and inspires your lifestyle. So did Mustang achieve that? Should this new Mustang be more? Or what do you want the Mustang to be? And remember, this is the entry-level car, not the special editions. M my opinion, the car in total will be just that, simply an updated American pony car, and heavy on the lifestyle vibe, and maybe nothing more for now. And it's to be determined how strong they're gonna focus on Mustang performance. By the way, the 1964 Mustang that started all this was launched also as a lifestyle freedom car. When it was falling down versus Camaro and Barracuda at the time on performance and sales. That's when Carroll Shelby swooped in to create the GT350, and that whole performance Mustang thing became a basic to the Mustang what do you want to be when you grow up question. The current Mustang Inspire social marketing campaign tells me that history is repeating itself with another preoccupation with lifestyle versus branding driven by performance versus racing. But we'll see, and we will get to all that performance and racing stuff by the end of this show. And lifestyle may play better in the US, but remember, this is supposed to be a global car, where I think performance and racing capability matter more to a car's credibility. Another hint of what's coming up later in the show. Oh, and yes, I know this entry-level Mustang with the V8 GT performance package is supposed to be quicker than the last Boss 302. So goodbye live axle shutter and 200 pounds of dead weight and hello, a car that's gonna be faster and maybe more corner friendly. Okay, the next question in that list of four, what do you wanna say about Mustang? Now as a brand manager, remember I deputized you, it's time to decide the Mustang storyline you wanna tell potential buyers, fans, and the world. And at its simplest level, it's all about this. Will Mustang be known as still a Mustang, like before, or a new Mustang? Will style and lifestyle ambiance dominate the message versus maybe go and go fast around corners? Now, I'm on the side that says this Mustang is clinging too much to tradition. As in, it's still a Mustang that you all know, and it's just an updated US pony car. And I'm asking you if you kids even care about old Mustang. You know, retro is kind of history. All new seems to be the new hip and cool. And if being Mustang limits what can be said or what you can be, then Tom Hanks, <laughs> we have a problem. So to me, I wanted a more radical move forward, a new, more advanced Mustang definition. I wanted something like this concept. I want twin turbos. I want tech. I want Mustang to be the most progressive technology that I can acquire at its price point. And I'm not talking about the dashboard touchscreen stuff. I want stuff to make the car perform. I want the top of the line Shelby when it comes out to compete with the GTR. I want a real driver's car. Now I know I may be banging up against budget realities and that's another brand manager quandary, but still, I want a Mustang that reinforces Ford's rant that they are a modern, advanced company building those type of cars and moving cars and the driving experience forward. 
Ford. Yeah, hell, see, it's in their brand name. That's what they should do. Mustang is a Ford statement car. It is emotion and passion. And pushing those limits, in my opinion, push those buttons in today's world. Nothing less, nothing more. Or you know what? If you can't be brave enough with Mustang, just bring me back the Ford GT. Sorry. OK, will Ford be selling Mustang on style, lifestyle experiences, leaving the car's performance as a secondary story? I, I don't know. But this handling of Mustang performance as a brand attribute is a big question that I'm taking to that PR launch. And I'm looking for understanding. Before I negate anything, I just want to understand. And again, in my opinion, moving Mustang away from its current reality and the current carboy perceptions demands, in my opinion, a real storytelling effort that creates real credibility and performance credentials for Mustang. Now, I'm not saying this new car and the later arriving Shelbys and other performance models won't be great, but making performance part of the core Mustang essence and not a niche behind some lifestyle story is, I'm sure, generating a ton of internal Ford discussion. And maybe there will be big surprises that will be coming to shut up guys like me. We'll see. Now, you can see where I'm going, but hang with me. And recall again, Mustang is now a global car, even if it's only projected to be only 10% of its volume. It's replacing Falcon in Australia. That's a big job. And I thought the image was supposed to be, for this car, kind of an affordable Aston Martin for the younger masses. And all that means to me is performance. Not a stylish poser with an Aston nose and its ass stuck in Mustang retro heritage. Hyundai, by the way, is beating the hell out of the affordable, attainable luxury mindset. Mercedes is trying that too. It's happening all over the fashion world. So is this the Mustang play, style first? Question number three. Who do you want to say all this to? In effect, who's the Mustang buyer? When I look at the sporty car list, and I did this exercise when I was consulting on the Chevy Camaro launch many years ago, decision number one is, do you want to just retain your current owners and then only conquest Camaro versus Challenger for Mustang? Or do you want to look beyond that, look at Velocitor, FRS, BRZ customers, BMW 2 Coupe customers, and all of those? Should your buyer be now and for, or for the future? Younger? Sure. But what lifestyle? What automotive mindset? And if that factors into the targeting, that's what matters in making that decision. So should Mustang try to get import buyers or stay happy in their kind of pony car world? You know, my answer is, if you're not looking beyond the big muscle cars, you're signing a death warrant for Mustang. What do you guys think? The last question, how best to say it all for Mustang? So with questions one, two, and three answered, how and where to communicate is the story here. Now, Ford loves social. I get that. Mustang is emotional, passionate. It's personal, and it's all about lifestyle, and all that aligns with social. But if I've convinced anyone that performance needs to be a core Mustang value in the US and global, how do market performance? Now, Ford won't use Nürburgring times, and I'm OK with that. But should we just have Git and do some eco drifting? Uh, I'm not so sure. Should we give the car a, to the media flax, like Spinelli, and let them pummel around the video, print, and blog post landscape? Well, make them happy and they'll get some performance attributes kind of communicated. But they're launching the car on Good Morning America with an audience age of, I don't know, demographic dead. Are they going to cling to American Idol, which I consider the top gear of TV talent show comp competitions? I'm guessing there's maybe $40 million in the marketing funds available for Mustang, not including incentives, ad and marketing money that will be allocated to Mustang annually. There may be more for the launch year, and again, I'm guessing. So Ford, you know, do your lifestyle vibe social media stuff. Make a big splash or two with product placement, like maybe having James Bond get confused and jump in a Mustang versus his Aston in the next 007 film. But carve off some of that budget. Go find a partner, a sponsor, to match your money dollar for dollar and build a Ford racing, Mustang racing program, a GT class car that will comply with the new for 2016 ACO rules and then race at Le Mans in the US with Tudor and all over the globe in those national GT series. Sell the race cars so it's a revenue center like Porsche Motorsport does and partner up with some brand or product that can take the motorsport message to fresh new places. And all those Brits and Danes that pilgrimage to Le Mans 24 and cheer Corvette racing when they go to that race, an event, by the way, with a global audience of over 325 million, Trust me, they'll cheer for Mustang, and it'll elevate their respect for that car and for Ford Motor Company. And if you have to, just let Ken Block co-drive the damn thing if you must. There's a million view, video views right there.
So Mustang racing has always been part of the Mustang story, and how it's handled now will be very telling. Look at some of these Mustang race cars from before. The first Mustang that went to Le Mans is here in 1967. The last Mustang raced there in 1997. In between, we had Trans Am Heroes, we had V8 GTO Legends, and even this ridiculous NASCAR Mustang decal kit. But cars like this 1980s Zack Speed in engineered IMSA Turbo Monster, to me, were where Mustang was super cool and where Mustang racing should be today. Fast, techy, aero, and racing across the globe, not in some oval in armpit Alabama. Racing is still a global statement maker. All you have to do is ask Porsche, Aston, Audi, and others. Mustang needs it too, especially if we're working to change the global image of this car. Yes, we've talked about how racing itself has become tradition bogged down, but Ford is bold and creative, and if anyone can use the racing platform and elevate the storyline in a whole new way, it should be Ford. Now tomorrow, yesterday, I hear, or I heard, the official Ford Mustang launch pitch. And we will find out if anything I said made sense, or I'm just out in the weeds versus the experts. But I do know this, in today's world, big change is the only thing that gets big attention. I want Mustang to live up to its legend by moving forward in a big way, by making big change, and making big statements to validate that it is a very fast, very refined, very modern driver's car. I'm sure this Mustang will be good, it'll sell well, and Ford will keep making it better, keeping it fresh, fast, and authentic. But what do you think about this new Mustang? You're the brand manager, you bastard. Tell me what's going on. Thank you.